Welcome to the Deep Dive, everyone. We're your hosts, Askazi. And the AI teaching assistant. We work alongside Sir Zafar Ali Khan, you know, Zach, helping students like you. That's right. And for top resources, definitely check out seaswithzach.com or ping the Ask Z AI teaching assistant on WhatsApp. Mm. The number is plus 923-362-81024. Definitely good places to start. Okay. So today we're diving deep into cracking the Cambridge O-Level 2210 and the IGCSE 0478 computer science exams. Uh-huh. And these exams, they're, well, they're pretty rigorous, aren't they? Broad syllabus, lots to cover. Totally. We hear it all the time. Students find the amount of content uh, maybe a bit overwhelming, and the questions can be phrased in tricky ways. Yeah, and that clock ticking down doesn't help the pressure either. It's a yeah. common challenge. Exactly. So our mission today isn't just to, like, list syllabus topics. It's about giving you practical tips, real strategies to handle these challenges. It's about exam technique as much as knowledge. Turning what you know into top marks. Precisely. We want you walking into that exam feeling confident, equipped. And we're drawing a lot from the insights Zach shares with his students all the time. Yeah, Zach always emphasizes that. Knowing it is one thing. Showing you know it under exam conditions is another. So what we'll do is first break down the actual exam structure, what the syllabus really covers. Then we'll hit time management, super critical. And finally, how to actually build those high quality answers that examiners are looking for. Sounds like a plan. Where should we start? The structure. Let's do it. Okay, exam structure and syllabus. For both 2210 and 0478, you're looking at um, distinct components, different question types too. Right, you've got your multiple choice, maybe some fill in the blanks, those objective types. And then the short answer questions, more structured ones. And the longer essay style questions that need more development. Specifically, paper one, that's computer systems. It's one hour, 45 minutes long. Got it. And that one's got compulsory short answer and structured questions. Covers the first chunk of the syllabus, right? Hmm. Topics one to six. Exactly. It covers things like, you know, data representation, networks, architecture, Man. the core computer system stuff. Okay. And paper two? Also one hour, 45 minutes. That's algorithms, programming, and logic. Ah, the more practical side. Yeah. Structured questions again, but also a scenario-based problem-solving question. That covers syllabus topics seven to ten. Things like pseudocode, databases, logic gates. Spot on. And a really, really crucial point, something Zach always hammers home. All questions are compulsory in both papers. No skipping allowed. You got to <laughs> attempt everything. Even if you just write down a little bit, it might grab you a mark. Definitely. Which kind of leads us into the marking scheme, doesn't it? Understanding how marks are given. Yeah, that's useful. So those quick one mark questions, multiple choice or whatever. Usually just one mark for the right answer. No half marks, tests recall breath. Simple enough. What are the short answer ones? Maybe one to four marks. Generally, it's one mark per valid point or definition. So you need to be precise. Get straight to the point. No waffle. Like Zach says, concise. Exactly. Then the bigger ones, six, eight, maybe 10 marks or more essay style. Right. Those are assessed differently, aren't they? It's about the number of relevant points you explain or discuss. Yeah, quality over quantity, a structured answer, clear points. That's what they want, not just like a brain dump. Examiners can spot padding a mile off. They want relevant detail. Absolutely. The marks tell you the depth needed. Two marks, probably two quick points, 10 marks. It needs a proper developed discussion. Makes sense. So let's dig into the syllabus topics themselves. Paper one first, topics one to six. Okay, so paper one, the theory side. You've got data representation, binary, hexadecimal conversions, ASIA, Unicode examples, how data is stored. Okay, the fundamental zeros and ones. Then data transmission, how data moves, like networks using packets. Right, computer architecture, the CPU's role is a big one there. Hardware and software, knowing the difference between system software, like your OS, and application software, like a game or word processor. Right, common question type. The internet, web technologies, and also emerging tech. It's quite broad. Zox resources cover this really well on the site. Good point. And paper two, topic seven to 10. That shifts more to the practical application side. Algorithm design is key. Pseudocode comes in there, problem solving techniques. Uh-huh. Databases too. Understanding queries is specifically mentioned. Retrieving information, yeah. And Boolean logic. Designing logic circuits, truth tables, that whole area. So it's a mix across both papers, theory, and application. Following Zach's curriculum really helps tie it together. It really does. And knowing the syllabus scope is vital, right? For revision, obviously, but also in the exam. How so? Well, if you see a question recognizing, ah, this is topic three, data transmission, it helps you, you know, access the right part of your memory. Good point. It helps frame your thinking. 
Okay, so we know the structure, the content. What about managing the clock? Right. Time management. Oh, this is huge. You can know everything, but if you run out of time... You can't show it. Yeah. <laughs> Lost marks. So what's the strategy? First basic step. Budget your time per mark. Zach often suggests calculating minutes per mark. How does that work? Well, say it's 105 minutes for 75 marks. Divide 105 by 75. That's 1.4 minutes per mark. Okay, so a two-mark question gets roughly just under three minutes. Yeah, and a 10-mark question, maybe 14 minutes. It's a guideline, but keeps you aware. Look at the marks allocated. That tells you how much time, roughly, to spend. Prioritize the big mark questions, too, maybe. Definitely strategic. Scan the paper if you can. See a high mark question you feel good about. Maybe tackle that first. Like logic gates if you find them easy. Exactly. Get some marks in the bag. Boost your confidence. But if you jump around... Label your answers clearly. Super important so the examiner doesn't get lost. Absolutely. And keep an eye on the actual time. Use a watch. Check the room clock. Set checkpoints. Like halfway through the marks by halfway through the time. Good idea. Mental checkpoints work, too. Need to finish section A by 10.15 if there's no clock? Ask the invigilator. Don't be shy. They're there to help with that. Right. And what if you hit a question that just stumps you? Don't panic and don't get stuck. That's the worst thing. Wasting loads of time on one tricky bit. So what do you do? Skip it. Mark it somehow. Leave space in your answer booklet and move on. Come back later. Fresh perspective might help then. Often does. Or working on another question might jog your memory. Maximize the marks you can get first. Smart. And assuming you don't run out of time, always try to leave a few minutes at the end for a review. Essential. Check for missed bits. Yeah. Like part C of a question. Proofread quickly for silly mistakes. Double check calculations. Zach always says do the reverse calculation if you can. A tip. And make sure answer C is in the space for answer C, not B. Oh yeah, easy mistake to make in a rush. A quick scan can save you marks. And one more thing. If the paper suggests time for a big section, like a 15 mark scenario question might say, allow 30 minutes. Try to stick to it. It's a guideline for a reason. And the absolute best way to get good at this? Practice. Timed practice with past papers. You get a feel for the pacing. No substitute for it. Okay, so time's managed. What about actually writing the answers, getting the knowledge down effectively? Right, because knowing it isn't enough, you have to communicate it clearly in the booklet. Step one. Read the question carefully. Yeah. Maybe even twice. Sounds simple, but... It's easy to misread under pressure. And focus on the command words. Define, list, describe, explain, compare, evaluate. Underline them. Highlight them. They tell you what to do. List needs bullet points, maybe. Mm. Explain needs reasons why. Exactly. And look for context words, too. In a school network means your answer has to relate to schools, not just networks generally. Mm. Don't give a generic answer if a context is given. Good point. And, uh... Read all the parts of a question A, B, C before starting part A. Why is that? Sometimes part B or C gives you a clue about what part A is really after. It can help focus your answer. Ah, interesting. Okay, what about those longer multi-mark questions? Planning helps, seriously. Just jot down a few keywords or a mini outline in the margin first. Sculpts you ramble. Totally. Keeps it structured, ensures you hit the key points, stops you forgetting stuff halfway through. Remember, quality not just quantity. Prevents going off on a tangent too. Okay, good advice. And make sure you answer all parts of the question. This trips people up. Like if it says describe A and D compare. Need to do both. Describe X, describe Y, then explicitly compare them. A key difference is, use phrasing like that. Address benefits any drawbacks if asked. Both sides. Precisely. Don't just do one half. Another thing, examples. Use them. Yes. Especially if it says give an example, that's usually worth a mark on its own. But even if not asked. A good example shows you really understand it, right? Like explaining interrupts of the smartphone example. Perfect. Just make sure the example is accurate and actually relevant. Makes sense. And the actual writing style. Clear. Concise. Use simple language where possible. Short sentences or paragraphs. Bullet points if appropriate. And use the proper terminology from the syllabus. Don't say the memory that forgets when you turn it off say random access memory or RAM and maybe briefly define it if you're using a key term. Shows confidence? And no. Legible handwriting, please. Oh, definitely. Yeah. If the examiner can't read it, they can't mark it. Simple as that. Okay. Anything else on answer construction? Checking your work? Yeah, especially for algorithms or calculations. Do a quick dry run of your pseudocode with simple data. Does it work? Or the reverse calculation check we mentioned. 
For theory answers, just quickly reread the question, then your answer. Does it directly address what was asked? Or did you just write down everything you remembered about, say, firewalls? when the question was specifically about why a firewall is better than a proxy server in this scenario. Exactly that. Stay focused on the question asked. Avoid tangential information dumps. Got it. Quality, relevance, clarity. Okay, so let's wrap this up. We've covered quite a bit for tackling these Cambridge computer science exams, the 2210 and 0478. Yeah, we look at understanding the exam format, the syllabus inside out. We talked about smart time management strategies, budgeting time, prioritizing, not getting stuck, reviewing. And then really focusing on analyzing the questions properly and constructing answers that are clear, relevant, and directly address what's being asked using examples, planning. And throughout, we've been echoing a lot of the advice that comes from Sir Zafar Ali Khan from Zach. It's that blend of solid knowledge and sharp exam technique. That's the winning combination. It's not just about knowing computer science. It's about proving it effectively under exam conditions. Absolutely. And remember, for fantastic resources curated by Zach, head over to seewithzach.com. And for that extra bit of help, the Ask Said AI teaching assistant is on WhatsApp, plus 923-3628-10241. We're here to support you, just like we support Zach. So hopefully you're feeling a bit more confident now you can do well in these exams with the right approach. Definitely. So the final thought for you, the listener, is this. Which one of these techniques we've discussed are you going to focus on implementing first in your revision? Think about it. Putting it into practice is the next step. Good luck with your studies.